In this video, I'm having a look at the Airfix HO scale ready-made vehicles. Fantastic little toy vehicles that didn't cost all that much and was a great addition to any young boy's army back in the 1960s and 70s. So first, just a little bit of a clarification. I only collect these type boxes. Airfix did in 1965, the first released these plastic vehicles and they called it Attack Force and had a different kind of packaging. Uh, I like these. They were released from 1968 all through the 70s. And me being born in 1968, grew up in the 70s. These are the ones I kind of recognize and can relate to. And it makes it a lot more fun to collect. And uh, at the end of the video, I'll, like always, I'll do like a spinning around close-up thing. I'll, for these, I'll do the both the vehicle and the box like this. So you can check them out, both uh, out at the same time. Might be a good reference for someone that wants to collect or something. Just cool to have it on the on the interwebs. So also, I wasn't sure how I was going to like do this video. Uh, do them by different, uh, you know, allied uh, German or whatever. But I figure I'd do it like in a timeline um, from the years released. And this book was really good for that 40 years of Airfix Toys by Jeremy Brook. A uh, very good book, very knowledgeable person about this stuff. In the book, uh, all the toys are listed by the year they were actually released. So that made uh, this uh, a lot easier. Also, I used the catalogs for, for just some reference pictures and stuff. And this also brings up the thing with um, this actually being, uh, in Airfix mind, toys not uh, scale model. Uh, scale models was a whole different uh, department of, of the company. Uh, toys uh, was another department. <laughs> um, so even the 132nd scale and HO scale told so toy soldiers so that actually part of the toy department. Uh, so that's, then you get a kind of a, a feeling for what Airfix was trying to go with these. Even though I sometimes complain that, you know, they didn't have opposing forces, blah, 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 and the errors were all wrong. This me being stupid because that's not that wasn't their point. Their point was to make awesome toys, and <laughs> they did. But so, like I said, um, 1965 first uh, soft plastic vehicles. Some of them carried over to 1968. Uh, some of them got redesigned. I think like the um, uh, landing craft, for instance, got redesigned, and maybe the troop transport. I'm not sure. But the first um, new vehicle that was released then was actually this one, the duck. I guess that's what they call it. Uh, on the back, you have uh, all the different vehicles uh, available at the time. And so let's see, it says uh, field gun and tractor, six by six truck, landing craft, troop carrier, patent tank, Centurion tank, 155 millimeter, blah, 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 blah. self propelled gun, such a long uh, name. And then of course the duck. So uh, the vehicle itself, uh, I have to say, Considering these are actual toys and not models, I have to say, I think the details on these are absolutely fabulous. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, I think at the time these are almost in scale model uh, detail, I would say. Very nice. Uh, I like that you can remove the canopy and like I said, soft plastic. So it's easier, easier to uh, put your soldiers inside of this. Uh, and yeah, one thing is kind of a shame though, is that, uh, I mean, of course, if you want to make uh, inexpensive toys, the axles on the wheels are actually plastic. So this one doesn't really roll that well. So that kind of, it's a bit of a bummer, but you can still move it around though. Mm, I like it. And then we have another transport vehicle. It's the US six by six truck. Not like a whole lot of detail, but I mean, it's just a truck. So how much can you put on there? Uh, I guess it's pretty reasonably uh, accurate, <laughs> whatever, if you need that. But And then, you know, be able to take the canopy on and off and make it easier to put things in there. I like that. It's a very nice little vehicle. And then another vehicle. And now we get into the thing that sometimes annoy me, that the duck and the truck are actually World War II. And this one is Cold War era. I can't remember the designation for this troop transport. The later one, I guess, is the M113, is it? That was in the Vietnam War. So this one is a little bit more basic in the details, but still, yeah, it's nice. And I like that the little machine gun up here can actually move around. Pretty cool little vehicle. And this one, since it's tracked, it gets different kind of wheels on the back here, on the bottom, I should say. Just regular plastic black wheels. It doesn't really move all that well. You could almost do without them. And then we get a huge transport <laughs> and that's the landing craft. Really nice. The first one uh, released was in green. Everything in the first years were in green and this one as well. And 
again super nice little details on this one the little machine guns actually move around and of course the the ramp up and down works it's actually cast into the bottom of the ship so eventually maybe this will snap off but i think it should work fine and it's just so i mean it's so cool just putting your trucks and vehicles in here and you know beaching this one and then lowering the ramp and driving off <laughs> really nice i like these and then uh, of course later they released it in a gray color as well and maybe that was because uh, you know some of the german vehicles they released later were gray so maybe it was the thing of being able to play you know gray against green to have two forces um, not that any of them were like correct or nothing but as far as toys that's kind of cool and there's actually two other vehicles the duck and the truck also came in gray i don't own those because they're really expensive but uh, yeah, anyways, so let's get into the armor. First, I guess we could look at the patent tank. I think this is a carryover from the 1965 ones. And if you look at the top of it, there's not that much detail on this one. It's okay, but mm, not that exciting. But it's a nice little vehicle and the little turret for the machine gun moves. I wonder if it did that on the real one. It seems kind of weird that it would. And then we have my favorite tank so far, the Centurion. And this one gets actually a lot more detail, I think very cool but we have the problem of course with the uh, soft plastic bent barrels but uh, you know some steam and some cold water maybe that could fix it but i'm not so sure though uh, they usually kind of just go back to the bent state anyways now after that then then we have the cool one see if i can find the box where'd i go oh here it is <laughs> the field gun and tractor um it's not cool because it's like the biggest or nothing because it's actually really tiny look at this it's not that much to it uh, the truck just basic plastic totally hollow but this little gun is so cool that they got so much detail into this one even though being so small you're gonna have to look at the close-ups to see this better i really like this one other than that, um, yeah, we, that's right. We have this one, the self-propelled gun. And this one I really like. This is like the biggest vehicle out of all of them, except for the landing craft, but that's a, a you know, ship. Uh, I like this one because if you look at this one, you can see that there's so much space in the back here. We could actually place uh, soldiers. And um, so it kind of, I don't know, interact, I guess the word is, or something. But it just seemed cool that you could put some of the soldiers in there to fire the gun or something. And it's just big and beefy. I like this one. I like this one. And I like the little uh, tractor with the 25 pounder. I think those are really, really cool little set. Oh, that's right. Also, I wanted to show you how these were presented in the 1968 catalog. It kind of looked like just like this. So just so you get to see it. And then in 1971, we get this one. <laughs> Antar Trank. Trank. <laughs> I keep pronouncing this wrong. Antar Tank Transporter. I have to say it very slowly. But this is a really nice big set very cool i like it and the truck itself has a lot of stuff on this one that goes on i think back on the trailer here is really cool all the checkered plating all the little details on there i mean just for being a toy that's pretty awesome and then the front also says antar in the front in in uh, pretty small letters i guess but big compared to the truck but the front is really cool and then the little ramps kind of a basic setup here it's kind of sort of just works um, I like it. It's cool to put your tanks on your tank transporter. <laughs> That's pretty nice. And then just, you know, like I said, um, toys. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, cool is that you can also, the little um, spare wheel also has the tow hitch on it here. So you can actually disconnect the trailer and just uh, put that to the side and make some kind of a rear support vehicle kind of a thing and you can just drive the truck around on its own um yeah and then let's see in 1972 we get some of the really cool ones we get my favorite world war ii tank the tiger <laughs> it's so cool one of these days i'm gonna go to bovington for uh, tiger day and see it actually run in real life and then also the panther 72 or i should say 1971 um they are actually in the catalog on the little side picture here uh, and it says tiger and panther but the picture actually shows uh 
Panzer IV, I believe it is. I don't think it's a Panzer III. I think it's a Panzer IV. And they're in green and very shiny, shiny also. Uh, high gloss plastic. But So that's kind of weird. But I guess uh, then in the 1972 catalog, there they are in the gray that they were actually sold in. So maybe somewhere out there in, in the big world, there's actually a, a, a mold for a uh, soft plastic Airfix uh, Panzer IV. That would be pretty cool. And that's also when you get... Uh, the gray landing craft and then in 1973 we get four uh, new vehicles but none of them ever show up in a catalog which is kind of weird we get the sherman which was only made in uh, green really nice and now we're talking detail this is yeah this is very nice there's so much little stuff on this one it's very nice um I didn't even notice this before, but this one doesn't even have the the wheels underneath. Either it's... No, it's supposed to come this way. No, I'm missing the wheels. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't even notice. Still doesn't move. So I got to get a complete one. Crap. Anyway, so... Uh, and then we got the Sherman. And then we get the T-34. Here's the other one. I have two green boxes. But of course, they came in a gray and a green. Also very nice, de nicely detailed. I guess this is also with the thing with having these as, you know, playing them green against grays. Uh, I haven't seen a gray box. I forgot to show you actually. Uh, the landing craft, they actually portrayed them like this with a green and a gray on the boxes. So you can actually see what was in the, the box. I haven't seen these with, on the gray cover on the box though. But uh, yeah, probably that's just very hard to find. So maybe that's why. And then anyways, you get the elephant. Where's the box for that one? Okay, no, over here. It's only at the bottom. Here you go. Pretty darn cool. So this one kind of gets to be the, the opposite of the 155 millimeter. But this one is interesting. This is the only one that has a, a green back on it. So it's actually gray and green on the same box. So it doesn't say on the back what other vehicles are available who knows why they did that but it's a very cool really heavy vehicle details are i mean so so looks really cool though <laughs> it's just so it's just so big it looks like it's gonna do a lot of damage i really like this one <laughs> cool and then you get the opposite of the 25 pounder and the tractor in the half track and gun which is also probably one of the nicer ones and one of the more expensive ones, I would say as well. And this, the same thing with this one. The gun is just so small and they still put a lot of details in there. That's really good work. And the soft plastic, I think for both of these probably makes them, you know, stand up to play really well. And then the half track, there's just so much detail on this one. So many little fine things with the shovels and all the cool stuff on there. Huh? I like it. <laughs> this one is so cool. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool vehicles in here. I should probably list my favorite ones, right? So the Tiger is going to be number one. But I think actually the, the half track and gun and then the tractor gun is like two and three. And then probably the Centurion, right? And then the Antar tank transporter at number five. So you can transport your Centurion. Panther is cool, uh, not my favorite when you have a Tiger, yeah. And so at the end also with, you know, some of these vehicles being gray and green um, and some of them, you know, being sold in both colors, you kind of get a pretty decent uh, variety as far as opposing forces. You can play green against gray. I think they did a really good job with that. So that's about it for this video. Also, I wanted to ask you guys to, to like and subscribe especially the subscription thing is kind of important because uh, with the algorithms the way they are now, if you don't subscribe and you start watching cat videos or something, drunk people, <laughs> spring break or something, uh, my video is not going to get recommended to you within like a few days or a week. So we're going to lose track of each other completely. And that's no good, right? And then also if you want to support the channel, I have those little super thanks at the bottom or I have this, it's called a Kofi page. You can buy me a coffee or something like that. I'll put the link in the description as well. That would help out a lot, you know. But uh, yeah, other than that, I guess that's it. And I'll catch you guys in another video. Cheers.